I'm Alida Fanzone and this is the very first episode of A Coffee With, the London Rolling Film Festival series of cozy conversations with industry professionals to stay focused and keep rolling all year round. I won't be alone during this journey. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the wonderful woman that will help me dig deep, or I shall say, sip deep into the secrets of the industry professional that will be our guest for coffee. Here with me is Harriet McMasters Green. Thank you for joining us. Oh, it's, it's a thrill and thank you for allowing me to and offering me the chance to host. Harriet has uh, 20 plus years into the industry as an actress, as a writer, but also into the well-being business. Harriet, thank you for joining me in this adventure. I'm thrilled because I think it's a really important way that we can communicate with everybody and just allow all industry professionals to find somewhere, a hub, a home to come together, to share, communicate and also feel uplifted and empowered in a profession that they're so passionate about and I'm very excited. Thank you for having me. So are we, are you comfortable to begin? Yes, of course. I'm very comfortable in this beautiful studio. It's actually Today's uh, location is kindly offered by Unico Creative Studio. So thank you, Unico. And let's start. What do you want to know? So Alida, you have a master's degree in communication and journalism, and you've been working with international broadcasters such as SBS Australia and uh, Rai Italy plus American Productions. So um, most recently, the BBC also. Yeah, BBC too. Yeah, brilliant. I am curious though, what prompted you originally to begin such a film festival? The London Rolling Film Festival started because I needed to connect with people because I was new in London, I was at the time trying to pursue my acting career and I knew nobody and I wanted to connect with directors uh, to start making friendship in the industry. So um, I was with my mentor in this pub in Shoreditch. We noticed that there were lots of screens and we thought, oh, why don't we organize a film night where we show our short films and invite directors and uh, why directors should come to our film night. Oh, maybe they will be attracted if we invite also producers and producers by investors and so on. I added things to the festival that would uh, make a nice environment for all these categories so to be there, network, share their passion and uh, help each other creating new projects, new connection for the future projects that they had in mind. Why is it important to you? To me it's really important to create an environment that is cozy but also very professional. That, that is what I was aiming to with around the Rolling Film Festival and now we escalated from uh, a pub in Shoreditch uh, to a proper cinema, the View Cinema Piccadilly in central London, so I'm very proud of it. So this is brilliant and it really has brought, and I know this for a fact that you've helped bring so many people together already. So for me, certainly coming from it from a wellbeing point of view as well, I think it's really important to, in the times where you don't feel empowered and uplifted to still have that connection with other people that are in a very similar boat and that may just be able to help reel you back in and support you when you need it the most and share ideas because I think in this business more than so many others I think that it's it, about connection and community and actually bring together um, very different vantage points is, is so, so, so vital for empowering one's own journey, whether you are a director, a producer, a writer, or an actor, I think. So Alida, can you tell us a few key points about the film festival, please? The London Rolling Film Festival main rule is the presence of the filmmaker that's allowing us to actually have a in-person conversation with the craft makers uh, and uh, so if I like something I can go and say oh I want to collaborate with you on your next project or I want to invest in your next mm -hmm. project so that would be nice and happened thanks to our investors that come to the festival. I like the fact that you can actually connect with everybody and I like to invite people that are industry professionals. We had distributors from Lionsgate, we had uh, um, producers that have been co commissioned to create documentaries for BBC, Channel 4. We had Mama Youth Project uh, uh, founder that actually just won a BAFTA. 
So I love the fact that we have a good network of very nice people that are always available to come and uh, give their help uh, to up and racing filmmakers but also other industry professionals so collaboration inspiration yeah we had tom payton for example to give us uh, a talk about artificial intelligence in films uh, so i'm very proud of the guests we have at the rolling film festival and you come to the festival and you get to speak to each one of those because it's not a, a huge event it's very but it is like, uh, I like to call it a boutique festival where you actually get to connect with everybody. That's fantastic. And on this podcast, we're going to be inviting people in, aren't we? From all over the, across the industry, right? Yes. From producers, directors. So not only will you get the chance to come to the festival, but also you can listen in and there'll be so much wonderful information shared, right? Where Absolutely. We want to create one more resource. We wanted to add more during the year. And uh, this is one way we will do that. Yeah. And I think that the wonderful thing to come out of this is that you needn't feel alone at all throughout the year, that we will always be with you, bringing you some really, really wonderful and incredible guests and sharing with you so that you can come maybe in person. You can also offer out your questions as well. Well, we will soon be also in person. So we will have an audience. Uh, members of the London Rolling Film Festival will come for free. And then we will open also the door to non-members that are happy to, to come and, and network with us. Can you tell us as an audience what we can expect from the film festival, the Rolling Film Festival? Of course, the screenings of the films, uh, the Q and A's with the filmmakers, uh, the Help to Roll Fund uh, that we launched last year that will help uh, kick off your project uh, and help realize uh, your film. Uh, we also have the Pitch Corner that really is good fun, and we are taking it further. I see in the audience Mike Smith that will talk about this later on. So yeah, it's just uh, a very good place to be, I think. And tell me when it is. When is the festival? This year's festival is going to be at the View Cinema Piccadilly, the 27th and 28th of September. It's a Friday and Saturday. So save the date. Absolutely, save the date. <laughs> and we'll be presented once more by the wonderful Rachele Fregonese. Actually, I think this chair is ready for her. I'm going to get her a coffee. Perfect. So let's welcome our next guest, which is Rachele Fregonese, actress, writer and producer. Rachele, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. So you're a actress, writer and producer. Correct. And you're our first wonderful guest on here. What an honor. <laughs> yeah, absolute pleasure to have Absolutely you. Absolutely honor. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I started as an actress which is what I always wanted to do since I think I was six. So I started training as an actress and etc. Then I moved to London and then the career was not going at the pace I wanted it to go. So, you know, when you don't find jobs, you don't get auditions and not able to find a great agent, uh, you start thinking about, OK, what can I do? Um, do I just change completely career or what do I want to do? And so I started to look into uh, the production side of things with the idea of producing my own work which is a little bit the path i am on at the moment mm. but you know life is never as straightforward so as i started working on productions i made connection and networking i met a leader that got me into the london rolling film festival which i think is a great project and a great way to meet people and network and get your projects ahead and i started working in um, TV production. I discovered the world of documentaries, uh, which is how I pay my bills at the moment, working as a researcher and producer for various broadcasters that also quite big, which I'm incredibly grateful. I worked on some uh, very interesting projects in the last years, um, all documentaries and varied from travel to uh, history. The last one is called Pompeii, the New Dig, where mm -hmm. we followed uh, the new dig in Pompeii for like a year and I got to do all of the historical research which is great as a writer because I get to learn a bit more how to um, implement my research into a narrative program that's more or less where I'm at and I'm still writing and getting my projects up to their feet and then develop them. So tell us a little bit more about this lovely 
bridge that you have between the writing, the documentary making? What do you think really supports you? For me, is I want to try and describe the world as I see it and put forward the stories that I think are needed in today's world. Meaning that we had a lot of stories that are told in TV but also film always come from a specific point of view, which let's be really, really blunt and uh, honest about it, is that of the white middle-aged man. Those are the people who make the decision and those are the points of view that we are then being fed as an audience. These are often the producers and the executive producers that greenlit movies. Also in TV industry, it's often their choice on what stories we tell. And I think right now, we are in desperate need to hear others' point of view, whether they are the ones of a female, whether they are the ones of a female foreigner, or someone that has that comes from one of the other backgrounds. It could be like an African background or Indians, Caribbeans, so that we can have a wider idea of what our society is. Because I don't feel it's very reflected in what we see in TV and movies or novels really. So I'm trying to, to see how I can use my voice to tell the stories that have not been told so far. How important to you is having this possibility of this community that's being built here around the Rolling Film Festival. How important do you think this is for us industry professionals to have this community? For me, first and foremost, so far it's like I'm a woman, you're a woman, a leader's a woman, and I think it's really important to have that model being out there, seeing other women doing things and being inspired by other women and other people who felt they didn't have a voice or couldn't have a voice or somehow needed to prove themselves much more than than just actually taking a stance to say, oh, no, I'm valuable and my voice deserves to be heard. Um, I think that's really important. And so, you know, with the London World in Film Festival, you often get to meet people who are either starting out or, you know, they, they come for, from all backgrounds. I've met people from literally each and every background. So it kind of gives you that confidence that you need in saying, okay, everyone's different. So also I can make a difference also I can explore my voice and uh, the world as I see it and that's valid it's not just that box of stories that can be told but my stories are valuable as well so I think that there's quite a lot of importance there and also meeting people who are like myself trying to get that network going get those connections so that you're not alone in a void creating a project but you're collaborating with people and trying to create a group so that you can grow together and achieve whatever next step you might want to achieve. I think it's really important that it's just very easy to also give up on ideas. Yes. And I imagine there's so many ideas out there that are just lost in space because you think that that somehow they won't be able to be brought to fruition and having a sense of community or certainly as a vantage point from women, I think we're a lot more empowered now certainly than when we were when I started in Absolutely. the industry. There were many things that uh, happened to me as a woman, as an actress, the way you're treated, etc. that I think that you have to really almost be 10 times as good and as competent and as confident as the others to be on the same level as, as the yes. others. Absolutely. And I think that that is the strength of the woman here but also it's also reflective also being able to work with 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 everybody and not having this kind of hierarchy this is what i think is really important about this project and about the festival is that everyone comes in with equality and there isn't that sense of i'm above you exactly you know? And also one of the other things that i really love about the festival is this thing called pitch corner where people had ideas and they decided okay I'll take this step into the void and share it with the audience and maybe in the audience there will be someone that will help me fund it and move it forward and etc and this was the seed with which this started now it's 
becoming bigger and bigger with each and every edition of the festival and this year but mike smith will talk more about it in a second but this year people do get a chance to get help on figuring out how to take them to the next step but i really think that the best person to actually explore more on this would be uh, the wonderful mike smith which will sit next on this chair yeah so fantastic i'll get him some coffee How <laughs> thank about you that? so much thank okay. you so much for having me and uh i'll see you soon at the festival save the date pleasure thank you thank you thank you thank you so welcome. much and don't forget to like and subscribe down here any questions that you have for any of our guests any one of us make sure that you pop them in the comments thank you So let's introduce our next guest, which is indeed our lovely studio host, executive producer, Mike Smith. Let's introduce Mike into the chair. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us, Mike. Pleasure. So firstly, I just want to know a little bit about you and what you do and only tell us. Some. So I've spent the last 30 plus years as a first a researcher, then a director and producer, then executive producer working in factual content, mainly for British broadcasters and American broadcasters. So BBC, Channel 4, ITV, Channel 5, Sky, Netflix, PBS in America, Smithsonian Channel, Discovery, TLC before that. So a range of people who are interested in revelatory factual programmes. So you're used to dealing with and communicating and having this wonderful relationship with a lot of people. So obviously the importance for you, as you know, for as what we're trying to create with the festival is this sense of community. And tell us a little bit more about your role within the festival. Well, I suppose the work that I've done in the production community, running a production company, um, leading quite big production teams, sometimes straying off the... Mm most uh, obvious factual territory into some events. Um, often team leadership is really important and that isn't just about making sure things happen on the day, it's about having an idea and a vision of what you want to make happen. But to me one of the real joys of having a company is to be able to create a culture in which people get an opportunity to do things for the first time. And one of the you know, it's an immense privilege to be able to do the kind of work that I've spent a lot of my time doing. And I suppose in act one of a career, you're trying to establish yourself, you're trying to make sure that you have the opportunities, and then you're trying to work out where you want to go. Act two is about going where you want to go. So you start thinking about what kind of films do I want to be involved in? And what will I say no to? What will I say yes to? What's mean? What's distinctively mean? And then as you get a chance to do that more and more, there's lots of different choices you could have. But for me, Act 3 is about saying, OK, I've been fortunate to have these opportunities. How can I work to give other people the kind of opportunities that were given to me? I think that's fantastic. And I love the way that you, everyone needs a springboard and an opportunity for that first time. Because without someone believing in us and giving us the opportunity, we don't we are not able to be seen we're not able to be given a chance so tell me a little bit more about this idea of yours the springboard and that pitch corner tell me how we well i think ideas are like people in a way they don't arrive fully formed so you you begin with a hunch with an instinct with a wish or an ambition to do something but it's going to take a bit of time to evolve that into something which is going to be the, the finished article so to me, I, I love the idea that as you develop an idea, you develop the artist who is behind that. Or in my case, often the journalist who's behind that or the, or the filmmaker who's behind that. So it's about building confidence in the person and about building clarity in the idea. What makes it distinctive? What makes it attractive? And now, you know, sometimes we put our heart and soul into ideas that don't happen that we can't make happen, we can't get over the line. But there's a process that's involved that even if that idea doesn't happen, that a future one will, because you're learning skills, you're developing clarity yourself. Sometimes we might park an idea, but we park it knowing we gave it a really decent shot, but it's not been a pointless journey because it's part of the beginning of the journey 
that you'll take to make the next project happen. I think it's really lovely that you that you really highlight the importance of if something isn't working or if we need to maybe adjust the journey and also understand that maybe, okay, this might not be right for right now. Because I think otherwise we have that feeling that, okay, I, I'm, I'll just, just give up. My idea is no good. When actually, what I love even as you're sat here is that you give off this sense of... Um, real uh, openness and, and that feeling of that one has um, the confidence to share, I guess, you know, rather than kind of thinking that someone, their idea isn't valid um, or isn't a possibility. I think there is real gold in actually just being a naturally good listener. And I feel that you are. And I think that's, that's really key, isn't it? Thank you. I mean, I've always thought, and I've sometimes said to people, it's easier to kill an idea than it is to breathe life into it. Yeah. And um, mm. and so that's a belief in people, it's a belief in that idea, but it's also a belief in the process. You know, what what is it that makes you mm. want to make this? What mm. is it? So in a way, you're always telling a bit of a story about how you see things. And I think that's where mm. this special thing, you know, some people in the world, because, and they gravitate towards a role or a job or a career because they might be a brilliant mathematician mm -hmm. and they might be going to computing. They might be a brilliant with their hands and be able to craft something and make things with their hands. They might be a super teacher and they might become a teacher, but there are those of us who are storytellers. And I think it's a responsibility for those of us who have sort of understood the power of the stories that we can tell to find those storytellers and really encourage them to tell their stories wherever they come from, whatever their background, whatever their access to the traditional way that you get to tell your story. And that's what gives me real delight. And that's what Unico is about. It's mm -hmm. about finding a way to say there's something about telling stories. We love making films. But we also love working with people to help bring their creativity out and to make people feel that they can perhaps bridge a gap towards the kind of people who can fund or can commission some of our ideas. And maybe it's about getting it commissioned and greenlit. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's about starting a conversation and beginning to show to some of these decision makers why it is that we think there's something worth listening to in a person that comes and talks to us about how we can help work with them. So, so tell us about this concept of the Pitch Corner. So for the last couple of years, um, Alida and Rolling Film Festival have been asking me to get involved with the Pitch Corner. And I suppose that's because I've got experience both of being the pitcher and the pitchy, if that's what we call people who get pitched to. Um, and uh, I think what you begin to do is you begin to understand how clarity about the idea, the ability to communicate it quite quickly is mm. really important. So there's this pitch corner, you get a minute to pitch to the audience and just getting yourself into a space where you think, what is it that I want to communicate in a minute is, I think, really good, both for the idea and for the person pitching. But what we want to do is we want to take a small handful of these ideas and give them a bit more thought, a bit more analysis. So along with a couple of colleagues in the industry who kindly said that they will come and join us for this event, the idea is that we give, um, we talked about it, whether it should be called a clinic or a surgery, but I don't so much love that idea because there's nothing wrong with the idea in the first place. You yeah. come into a clinic, you mm. don't necessarily yeah. need yeah. help. You've mm -hmm. just got something that you want to springboard for. So that's the idea, is that it's a springboard where we can take the idea, talk about it, talk about what might resonate, talk about what might be components in how the development of the project goes that might appeal to people who might put funding in or might appeal to people that we know in the community so that the idea sort of comes energised at the end of the process. I love that. And Mike, if there is someone watching this or indeed listening to this and thinking, oh, I would really like to get in touch with that gentleman or come and meet him indeed at the festival, what would your advice be for someone that's maybe just starting out or that's feeling a little bit nervous about doing this for the first time? Well, I think, you know, it's like, um, it's like somebody who's learning to drive a car. Mm -hmm. You know, either you can be impatient at the learners 
or you can recognise that we've all been a learner once mm. and that we've all been a different sort of part. And that actually, I like the learner driver um, uh, analogy because it, it really speaks to me. I was lucky to get some formal training in the year, you know, 30 years ago when broadcasters would put money into training people. I got some good training that's always stood me in good stead from the BBC. But I was still working for a couple of years after that. Mm. And the big question for me, and it used to actually keep me awake at night, so I was fun to say it, but, but it was almost like, okay, now I've been taught to drive, where am I going to go? Mm, yes. And yeah. I found it a real challenge, actually, that kind of, well, what stories do I want to tell? But I had, in a way, what seems now like a luxury. Somebody was paying me, and I was doing the work at the same time, but I was, that was the question. Before I can direct something, what do I want to direct? What do I want to make? What is it that will distinguish what I do from what someone else does? And so I think I'm always interested in encouraging people to recognise that that is a challenge in itself. You know, we don't, we don't sort of arrive with this sort of um, clarity about where we're going to. If somebody who drives a car can drive it to lots of different places, you know, and and it is not just about fetishizing the car, like some people do that, you know, and by analogy, fetishizing the industry. It's about, okay, if I've got an opportunity to do something that is distinctive, that is me, that's my work, that sort of sense of the unique artist in all of us, the unique storytellers in all of us, okay, where is it that you can go and you can take an audience that only you can, and to me, that's the sort of magic of what we do. I love that. And Mike, finally, if there is anyone that wants to get in touch with you now, is there any way that people can get in touch with you at all? Yeah, just Google Unico Creative Studio yeah. and um, and find out what we're doing. And absolutely, do get in touch. And and I I love this festival, um, Rolling Film Festival, is got exactly the sort of opportunity to meet. So come and talk to me there. Um, and start a conversation. That's wonderful. Oh, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please do pop them in the comments and I'm sure Mike will be delighted to answer them for you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Well, this was the first episode of A Coffee With. I hope you enjoyed it. How was it for you? I loved it and I can't wait for the next episode. So make sure that you get your questions in, make sure that you let us know who you want to see and we'll do our best to get some really wonderful, wonderful people and to share their advice for you. A big thank to our guests, Raquel Fregonese, Mike Smith, to our wonderful presenter, Harriet. And especially for you all for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. By the way, next one is gonna be a special edition from Cannes Film Festival. So please get in touch if you are attending the Cannes Film Festival this year because you may join us live. Bye. Thank you.